All right, I'm doing a video right now. This is about basically reptile reality. And this is basically I'm going to talk about. You've just bought an animal. Somebody's just shipped you the animal. It's a company, individual, whatever. And the animal comes in and it's alive. First thing right off the bat, was the animal represented to you as you hoped? And did it come in alive? So generally, the animal's come in alive. Hopefully, depending who you're dealing with, the animal's what you wanted to see. It was, it was uh, when you open the box, you should feel like, yeah, this looks good. I, I like this. Everything like that. It's, you know, it's weight's adequate. A couple things you want to be uh, interested in is just uh, about temperature. And uh, I'm, you know, New England reptiles in the Northeast. So basically when we ship, depending on where we're shipping, we have to be very aware of temperatures. We just have to sometimes you be aware of the time of the week. Uh, later in the week, we're, we're nervous of shipping because there could be delays where uh, shipments are held over the weekend and that is could be death for your animal. So generally we like to ship earlier in the week so we get our uh, animals to our customers in a timely fashion. Secondly, we need to make sure that the animal is getting there within uh, temperature constraints that are acceptable to cold-blooded animals. Uh, if we get them too cold, uh, it could cost the animal its life. Uh, certainly it's no fun. It's uh, very uh, disorienting to say the least. So we include a 40-hour heat pack. We use an insulated box, cloth bag, uh, got some shredded newspaper. We shred them in big barrels right here. And then we pack this all inside underneath some newspaper. We want to basically in, uh, encase the animal into a, a temperature area where we're shipping, you know, usually over a 24 hour period, where the temperature is acceptable, you know, for this animal. So that could be in the 70s or 80s. That's optimal if we can get that, you know. I'm not talking about shipping, you know, a frog or anything like that. But let's say I'm talking about lizards and snakes. We ship in boxes, uh, usually a couple air holes, not too many. And uh, you just got to adhere to, you know, like if you're shipping to, let's say, Florida. Just make sure you're aware of what you're shipping to Florida is not a reptile of concern or anything like that. So anyways, I've sent the animal. Now the customer gets the animal. You know, the animal in my care at New England Reptile, we're, you know, it behooves us to make sure that when we send people animals, we send them something nice, something that feeds, something that, you know is what they want. Because, you know, when they open the box, that initial response basically authenticates whether or not you're a good company or good outfit to deal with. So generally, in, in my mind, I take a lot of pride about my company and my employees and my manager and what we do. So I want my customers to be happy. No, nothing worse than sending, you know, say if you ship some crappy, inadequate animal, customer gets it, opens it out of the box. Oh my goodness, you know, it's it's got all these different problems. That's that's not good. So anyways, so let's say we did ship a really nice animal. Now the customer gets it. Now it's out of my hands. Now it comes down to the customer's abilities and what they understand of the animal. Is this their first snake? Is, you know, do they have the right parameters? But let's get down to basics. These are not coffee mugs. These happen to be living animals. They have minds. They actually have intelligence. They can think. So let's look at a blood python. This is an albino T negative blood python. Okay, look at look at the weight of that. That animal, you can see, that is, I mean, the condition of this animal is, is fat. And right now it's actually even a little bit nervous. So it will puff itself up a little bit because basically, you know, blood pythons as they are often um, very, uh, a little bit on the nervous side, a little bit distrustful, and so we have to establish a relationship with these animals. Yes, so I talk about it on my monitors, but indeed it's the same thing with all sorts of other reptiles. I don't care if it's a bearded dragon, it's a blood python, it's you know ball python, whatever. We have to anticipate these animals are, are maybe possibly smarter than what we actually understand. Uh, reptiles don't often link up to our understanding of how things work, so sometimes we, we're having a hard time perceiving what these animals are aware of. Well, I can tell you this much, they're aware of a ton. So this animal has now been taken from its place, often its place of birth, where it's lived, let's say a year, two years, two months, whatever it is, and it's set up to the smells, the temperatures, the all sorts of different things of nerd. And now I've put it in a box. That's kind of traumatic. That This animal has no understanding of what just happened to it. So it gets, you know, we maybe we double even check the sex. Then we put it in a bag. And then it gets put in this box. Who knows what this animal has to endure. So now the animal gets to you. So what's the first thing you should do? 
be very respectful when you unpack it. Give the animal a chance to take it all in. Certainly with you know monitors and stuff like that that are a little bit higher up on the um, level of, of awareness. But so I have a, a, a snake like this. Uh, we generally soak all our animals before we ship them. So one of the things I do suggest, we're going to soak that animal just to make sure it's hydrated. But it was hydrated when it left. So I think in you know, 24 hours, nothing's really going to happen. So what I do is I get another bin. Or not a bin, if I'm going to take it out of the, the bag. The first thing I do is put it, in, I put it in this bin just to inspect it. So then I take a bin. See how shallow that water is? That water is just a little bit. So I want, at the most, to come up a third the side of that animal's sides. I do not want to put that animal halfway in water or even worse. You're going to instantly cause panic. The animal could uh, take in a lung full of water. That could actually really you could really lay down the law right then and there. The animal will have a bad experience, mistrust you, and now you have a whole long road ahead of you gaining the trust of this animal. So anyways, so we're going to take this animal. This is basically, it's tepid water. So it's not hot water. So remember, this animal, let's say if I temp gun this box, and this box was, let's say, like, let's say it's 74 degrees with a little hot spot in there. So that animal core temperature might be 74 degrees. If I suddenly go and stick this in 88, 90 degree water, that might be a little bit shocking. So I kind of just a little bit warmer than room temperature and it's warm, just kind of tepid warm to the touch, something that's comfortable. I can take that animal. And I'm going to put that animal in here. So now I'm giving the animal a chance to uh, hydrate. And I probably recommend that it's probably a good idea to put this animal quiet for a little bit and uh, let that animal uh, drink. So if I'm sitting there looming over it and bothering this animal, it may not drink. It may not do any of the things that I, I you know, want this thing to do if, as it starts to settle in. So I'm going to end this video right here. This is part one of some real basics when you, you first get your animal, what to do and uh, my opinion on all that. So that's the end of part one.